my favourite habitat in the forest and, and I'm going to introduce you a little bit to uh, growing trees from seed because you might know, you, you know already that it's, it's just good to grow trees, grow to plant trees, um, but you might know, not know where to, how to go about finding these trees because uh, they're really expensive in nurseries if you go to buy them. But you can buy that. You can grow them yourself. You can gather the seed um, and process it, and and you might even go on to uh, barter these trees or sell them because they they do say that money grows on trees. I would say that I'm a compulsive tree grower. Um, so I've been growing trees most of my life, and I've kind of learnt learnt lots along the way uh, about how to how to do it and how not to do it. I made lots and lots of mistakes along the way. Um, and uh, much of this information, I'm going to show you this book before I get my hands dirty with the trees, uh, with the seed, uh, because this, lots of the information that loads of us have learnt along the way has been put together in this super little book. You can find all sorts of info elsewhere. Um, and the Royal Horticultural Society Book of Propagation is, is one of my favourite books for a wide range of species. But this book, um, from Reforesting Scotland, it's the Tree Plants Guide to Galaxy. Um, and it's, it's pretty concise. Uh, it gives you lots of info on how to, to deal with seed, how, where to plant trees, all about the different, mostly native species, but some others in there as well, useful and native species. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a great book to get you started off. Seed. This is my collecting pot. Strap. Comfortable strap round neck. And it gives you both hands free to reach up and just reach, reach up into the trees. And, you know, like monkeys, we've been doing this for thousands of years and it feels really good. I think the only other time that I reach up like this is when I'm dancing. So to go and dance with the trees in the forest, anywhere, like uh, you, you, when you start gathering seed, you, you get your eye in and you start kind of just seeing it everywhere and just a few, few bits here and a few bits there into the pot. Um, and then you can take them home. And if you're like me, leave them in a plastic bag, um, rotting away until you remember them and it's not a problem because naturally a fruiting uh, seed would be eaten by birds or animals and spread around through the forest it might just fall off um, lie in the leaf litter and the fruit would be rotting off and exposing the seed inside bit by bit every species has a different way of moving around. So what we've got here is some hawthorn, um, which is semi-rotted. I think I picked it uh, two, three, three months ago. Um, some of the seeds, you can see this lovely red, red berry. Um, it's a super, super shrub, beautiful flowers in the summer, um, in the early summer, May. That's why they often call it May as well. And this is kind of semi-rotted, but to store it more effectively so it's not just sitting in a plastic bag, I'm going to mix it uh, with some coarse sand. This is just like unwashed sand that is just washed up. Um, you can buy it, you can buy unwashed sand from builders or you can kind of just go and find a place where you can dig it up. Not sea sand because that's just got too much salt in it. And I'm just going to put some in, in the pot and mix it in mix the berries in, kind of layer it in, and this is called stratification. A few berries, a bit more sand. More berries. More sand. So you've got layers so the fruit can rot off the seed without getting too mushy without getting too soggy and without rotting in itself. And this is kind of mimicking a, you know, how it would land in the soil. We've got a pot with 
sand and berries all ready to sit over winter and maybe even over another winter. Some of these will start germinating in the spring and I usually don't sow them until I kind of get very late and very behind and they've already sprouted so I try to do it really really carefully and prick them out. What I'm going to do is just cover this pot over with a piece of mouse netting. It's a really really fine, um, fine netting just so that the mice don't get in and eat all that seed, which they will, given the chance. So that will sit for the rest of the winter until I remember it in the spring. There's some other seed here. This is the dog rose. Treat it in the same way as the, as the hawthorn and you treat all, lots of the fruiting species like this. Um, the cherries uh, and you know you can experiment as well uh, you could remove all the flesh here's one that here's some seed which has come out of the the fruit there um, and you could just sow this into some compost um, cover it cover it lightly and that would grow quite happily and here it's my personal favourite is a uh, juniper. Now these berries are gathered from a, a bush recently. Um, so this juniper seed, and we've got two different ages here. We've got uh, last year's berries, which are these lovely purple ones, and then the the brown ones, which are a year older. Uh, these brown ones, once they've stratified, once those flesh has rotted off during the winter, these would germinate in the spring. Um, if you go to pick juniper, you'll find there's green ones on there as well, on the bushes. And these are, are immature yet, not ready to be picked. You leave those in place, but they're the tastiest ones. You treat these in the same way as the hawthorn, mix with sand and leave for the winter. There's all sorts of things you can do. You can put them in the fridge and trick them that they've had a winter, you know, for a few weeks and then take them out again, put them in a warm place, trick them that they've had a summer to kind of speed up the process. But I just do things in a really ad hoc way, kind of when I can, because I'm doing lots of other things as well. So I sort of, they're amazingly resilient and um, uh, forgiving tree seeds are. So I've just been talking about a few berries here. Um, obviously there's loads of a different more species. You know, I used to grow about 34 different uh, native tree, tree and shrub species in my nursery and then you can get into all the edible species, all the kind of more interesting ones and useful ones. Um, and they all require different treatments. So once you get into it, you get, it's fascinating. You can kind of get lost in it and, and learn and explore. So this is, uh, this is alder cones. Now, in each of these cones, once these open up, once they dry, there's little orange seeds that uh, have cork in them so that they're designed to float down rivers and, and colonise riverbanks. All possibilities are in these seeds.